What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, somebody in my one of my videos commented that I should try to upload more um, frequently, but less uh, uploads at one time, because uh, cluster uploads aren't really great for the YouTube algorithm. And that's true. One of the reasons why I tend to release most of my videos at once instead of just piling them onto a back end is because I'm impatient. <laughs> That's pretty much it. If I when I make my videos, it's like uh, I want people's reaction to this now, so I just release it. And I try to, like I said, the reason why I do this video, these chat or this channel, is because I like to interact with people. And the more videos, the more interactions, the more power for me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm gonna try to. Well, the, the whole message of this is I'm gonna try to get videos out once a day. Um, it won't be as many videos as it normally is. Today I'll probably have two videos out. Um, Sometimes I only have one video out. It really depends on what I'm capable of doing that time. And sometimes I might have back videos. So if you see me wearing the same shirt or something back to back days, chances are I recorded the videos together. That's the only reason. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and check this out. This is a video series that I haven't really had a chance to go back to. Um, it's been a minute. This is Geography Now, not Geometry. I know I made that mistake the first time I did the channel. Uh, geography now this is Germany episode now I know a lot of people wanted me to check this out I said I was gonna do everything based on the the longevity the country had so if you want to see my other videos I've done Egypt I've done China I've done uh, India I've done Iran and now I'm just going to get into the countries that people request so this is Germany this is the first uh, episode so be sure to be on the lookout for other ones I think I did Italy too but be sure to look out for any future ones. And if you have any other requests, leave it in the comment section down below. Like I said, my videos will be out about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. Whether it's one video or two videos, it'll be something there. But with that being said, let's jump into this and see what it has to offer. I've talked enough. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated <laughs> history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Let me go back. I kind of miss, I kind of miss most of that. All right. Of Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. <laughs> Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Those are probably the best gummy bears. Hearing. On the market, though. On gummy bear. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, hmm. each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is- New to me. Did not know that Germany broke itself down in states like us. In a way, we're like cousins. Yes, Germany brothers. United States is here with you. We understand the complications of um, state politics. Let me know which let me know which states in Germany happen to be the the more hillbillyish ones, or the ones that tend to think too much of themselves. Every state, every country that has states has them. There are certain areas that think they're better than other areas. There are certain other areas that are better than other areas, and I want to hear all about it. <laughs> With its own let's constitution, get into it. three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Okay. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country 
country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. That's what I want to learn. Von Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms. This guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire, made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, I states, and dukedoms, that. which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game, we gotta scramble for some colonies, and that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also, keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years, they were looking for the lost city of El Dorado, so technically, why did they pretend like that was just some lone bank that's just floating out there by it by itself, like some lone account? You just happen to own a country by accident. But <laughs> like how how does that slip through the uh, a banking error in your favor? That Okay. <laughs> you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War I, the monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see the blocky Soviet-style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing That's is, although Berlin is about. the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, I'm, I'm gonna go back, but yeah, that, that's what the entire Cold War was about. People thought it was about uh, economic uh, structures and political uh, foundations. No, it was about light bulbs. That's all. Just light bulbs. Notice how my room is lit right now. It's, it's not, it doesn't have a yellowish tint. It's all about light bulbs uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over, the most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world, and of course everybody knows about the autobahn the highway system in which if you see this sign it means there's no speed limit and it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway and no wonder considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get i can only imagine how dangerous two. that is <laughs> Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then wow. everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and an Is the Rhine supposed to be where um, the Rhinelands were? Um, Y'all know from the oversimplified video where they said that the German soldiers had to evacuate that as an agreement from the Treaty of Versailles. And that led, well not led to, but that was one of the things Hitler looked to overturn before he started the war. I know I might sound ignorant saying that because it's like, oh, uh, it's Rhine, obviously it's the same thing. But I don't know, sometimes it can be different. Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable, and another third is woodland, and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the North Flat Plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's Tornado Alley. Due to its position... They have Tornado Valley, too. Arctic blasts of Scandinavia we have something and else moist, connected. warm jet streams <laughs> of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany number, than any other country in the world. The number of tornadoes of in our countries is too damn 
Shanghai. The world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absolutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! Germans are heavy meat eaters. See how Germany is with bread? That's how we are with cheese and butter. That's the, well, that's the reason why we look the way we look and they look the way they look. Cheese and butter isn't a great combination. Specifically in pork, they basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. <laughs> Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest mm. continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, Foxes, badgers, and the national animal like, the eagle can be found. It looks like where Princess in these parts. was. Nonetheless, uh, economically, Germany is known by. mostly for their <laughs> exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of, like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the whole beast of the thing from Brazil. Remember? You told well, me we that. have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of this rehab, reconciled with Janet his wife Jackson and kids, and is taking is his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Americans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is. A mo That's actually ironic. Hitler would not have been proud. <laughs> I guess that's the greatest irony of all, huh? <laughs> like that's the one way to stick it to Hitler the most. Make Germany a migration destination. That's what makes countries great. Whenever you can get the best of every single culture and get it together in your country, that's when you prosper. I feel like that's when you prosper the most. Like when great minds are able to get together and like combine their thought, nothing's better than that. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech what exactly border, is a protected and Plattdeutsch, language? or Low German, which has to similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional dis They got Amish too! <laughs> Another point between America and Germany. Similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions though, Germany is kind of divided into Forget five me. cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea 
sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Mm. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. <laughs> and then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized, perpetuated <laughs> stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half-Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Another misunderstanding we both share. Some of the in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischertiketierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. <laughs> This is because many words are mertudig, or ambiguous words, that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound, however, spelling reform has also known for a very scary and creepy years, which has led nursery to some rhymes. Germans also love and dubbing stories. everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christian. Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder, or economic wonder, happened, to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school, and Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. This is what I've been calling for for the longest of time. <laughs> there, like, if I were ever president or something like that, and I know being president does not mean that you can just incorporate whatever the hell you want, but let's say if I was just given the ability to just snap my fingers and get something done. I would create an education system that, let's say, the first five years or so are dedicated towards you learning the basic stuff, reading, writing, arithmetic, all that other good stuff. But then once you start to hit your teenage years, your education will be based on, let's say, an assessment that you take where we determine what your interests are, what you're good at, and create a curriculum that's dedicated towards that particular thing. Like, stop with this stuff where you're teaching a kid all the way until they're 18, stuff that they may not ever use in their damn lives. Like, the fact that you can get out of school and still not be qualified for a job is crazy to me. Especially when you can teach people to do this stuff when they're young, and by the time they're old enough, they would have experience and the, the requirements for whatever job they were interested in. No, I'm not ever going to get into politics, so... If you do like that idea, forward it to a congressman and maybe something can get done. Hopefully, if it sounds good. It sounds good to me. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture Korea's through music coming and art. Up when in you fact, guys. there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and 
unless if yeah. you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in I any kind of like that. patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's Other good because it signifies that. truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. We Albrecht, all know which countries need David that. Frederick, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, well, Albert Einstein, done, although Americans would like to claim that he it. moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> One of thing Germans do best uh, would have musicians. to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Friendship zone. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Like Germans the, have been supporting and like sharing Liberia ties both America. economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they they were like, woohoo! Even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Yeah. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württemberg, get along with Switzerland. East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries. The Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France. And the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like... I also know that uh, based on what a certain Estonian YouTuber said, Estonia is very close with um, Nordic countries as well. So I believe Germany would be right in there with it. Of Germany as the two have had an angry start but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently and the brief time that they've been around they've kind of gone through some of the most intense world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet they've come out working yep. hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned, another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Yeah, I mean, I love the, I like the, the redemption story of Germany is one of the most fascinating and honestly happy stories I've read. Like, to, to go from where they went to being able to accept and take responsibility for it and move forward, because like I said, there are a lot of countries out there that did commit atrocities and to this day continue to deny them. Um, I believe that Japan still wants to downplay the uh, atrocities done in World War II. Uh, I believe Turkey has some situations going on with the Armenians. I believe that like, there's a ton of countries. America too. America, we've done a bunch of crazy stuff and taken out a bunch of uh, uh, country leaders and things like that. and there's like a lot of times you'll hear people try to justify it but i like the fact that they're just willing to take responsibility and try to move forward now you look at them and like all the countries that they pretty much invaded in world war ii are like their closest allies now it's amazing and i just wish more countries were like that
I wish America was like that. I wish we were able to take, and I'm not trying to be that person that just bashes on America all the time. We have some great stuff that I'm 100% proud of. I'm proud to be an American 100%, but I do feel like there should be some things where you just take responsibility for. And we got to get rid of this, uh, this over patriotic Jangoism that seems to be sweeping the country as of right now, where like you automatically think that America's the greatest and everybody else is beneath you it makes no goddamn sense to me um i feel personally that in order to make something better you always should look at its flaws as opposed to just its strengths and try to work on those because it's like i have the mindset of you're only as strong as your weakest link and like the more you focus on the things that are wrong the more you can actually make your country a better place and that's how i am i like i admire germany i admire a lot of countries in the EU because they go out of their way to try to take responsibility for everything that they've done and they try to do what's right. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking as an outsider. So if you happen to be in those countries, obviously, you know, some stuff that I don't. That's like, yeah, you think, you know, but you don't know. But from the out from an outsider, it looks like they're more willing to accept what the people want as a whole as opposed to like a country like America in which case they'll go based on whoever donates the most to a politician but with that being said I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up now I know I've talked a lot during this uh, reaction I was kind of in a talking mood like I said looking at like Germany's history especially like recent history it makes me happy and sometimes when I get real happy I get talkative so I don't know I'm just a fan of um of this but with that being said if i said something that was wrong or anything like that be sh be free uh, feel free to go in the comment section and let me know if you know any information that i don't know about uh or anything extra you want to throw in be sure to leave it in the comment section down below um i do know that sometimes doing videos on germany and stuff will attract certain types of crowds i've had them on this channel before and the funny thing is they try to they try to present themselves like they're just trying to be open-minded and then at some point they, they they hit you with the 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 hard uh conspiracy theory level stuff on your head and you're like ah i, I see i saw it coming and there there it was so be on the lookout for that but if you happen to know anything that i don't be sure to leave it in the comment section down below um i look forward to learning more about uh just countries in general <laughs> like i said if you have a country that you want me to check out um be sure to leave it in the comment section down below and I will be sure to do uh, or react to a video on it. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to something else. I look forward to seeing you guys there. I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully, you've just been a little bit more enlightened. And I'm going to give you guys the deuces. Signing out. Deuces.